Welcome to Adobe Bridge and today I got a question in the comments section of my ultimate guide to Adobe Bridge which isn't too ultimate because I have one aspect that I didn't really cover but that's okay because I don't really think it's something that people use all the time but today I'm going to show you how to do this it was a very good question from Carl and he has thousands and thousands of photos all mixed up in folders and nothing is organized so what can he do? And can I use Bridge to do this? So yes, you can do Bridge to do this. So what I'm gonna do is a really simple simulation or tutorial on how to achieve this. So I have this folder here and we'll just say this is my thousands of millions of images that are all mixed up together. And I'm just gonna select the top six. So I'm going to click here and shift click and select those top images. The first thing that you're gonna to have to do is start going through your images and moving them to a new location. And moving them to a new location is really easy. So you can go up here to file and you have either move to, and this is your specific folders, or down here you can choose one, or copy to. So we're gonna go move to and we're gonna make a folder since we don't have anything. So we're gonna place this in websites right here and we're gonna make a new folder and we'll call this move to. And we'll go ahead and hit create and open. And just like that, you can see those images are gone. So if I go back, we can see here's that move to folder and there are new images inside of the move to folder. Now you're basically just gonna go through your images and whenever you wanna move something to the move to folder, you're going to select them and then go up to move to. Now you might have to create 10, 20, 30 different folders to organize what you're doing, but this is an easy way for you to actually see the images versus trying to recognize stuff through the file name. And that is your first step to get everything in a folder that you want it to be in. Then you can notice we have all these different things going on here. Now we're gonna rename them. We're gonna assume that these are all similar images and these are pictures of my dog, Freddy, okay? So we're assuming that these are our pictures of our dog, Freddy. We're gonna go ahead and shift click our images and now we are going to rename them. So we're gonna go up here to tools and notice we have batch rename. And then we get this dialog box up here. And the cool thing is once you've done this, you can actually save a preset of it. So you can just go in here and select that preset and you don't have to go through and click on all this stuff over again. The first thing that we have here is destination folder. So do you want to rename them and put them in the same folder? That's what we're gonna do. You can move them to another folder or copy them to another folder. Any one of those is fine. I'm just gonna rename and put them in the same folder. The next thing that we have our file name. What do we want it to do or what do we want it to change it to do? So you'll notice that the current file name is this crazy ass number up here. And that doesn't mean anything to anybody. Notice down here below, we have new file name and this is what we're gonna make it say. So it makes a little bit more sense. The first thing you're gonna do is choose what you want it to do. And you have a choice between text, new extension, all of this information here, but we're gonna use text. And since this was our dog named Freddy, we're gonna type in Freddy and you'll notice that Freddy is now located under there. I'm gonna use a dash or you could use an underscore to separate that. Next, we're gonna choose date. We can either use date created, date file modified, today, yesterday. And in this case, we're gonna go ahead and use date. Now, if you didn't know the date or you wanted to do something very specific, you could change this to text and, and just manually put it in but we're gonna go ahead with date created. And then you have the option of how you want the date to be shown. We'll just leave it at this to keep it simple. The next thing that we have is a text in that text. We have a dash or an underscore in this case. And that underscore is leading to the sequence number. So we're gonna change the sequence number to one. So it starts with file number one. We can choose and have it be three digit, four digit, five digit, doesn't matter. So you can see here it's four digits. And if you wanted to get rid of one of these, like we wanted to get rid of sequence number, you could hit minus and that would remove it. Or if you want to add one, you can hit plus. 
So we would come back down here. We would hit sequence number one, three digits. We are good to go. To preserve current file name in XMP metadata, if you do want to do that, you can go ahead and select that. Now it's preserving the current one. So if you want to preserve that, you're going to select that there. We don't want to do that. What we have now is a preview and we have this crazy number, but now it's going to be like this. And then it's going to do file one, two, three, and four. And if you want to save that, you can simply come up here and hit save. And we will just call this test and I'll call it okay. And now we have a preset of it and we can just hit rename and you'll see just like that. Now we have Freddy one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And all these images have been renamed. Now, one of the issues that you're going to run into is it renames the files, but it doesn't have any metadata to use for searching or keywords. So if we come over here and notice, we can filter things by keywords, but we don't have any keywords. And over here, if you look, we don't have much information in here. So we have no metadata for these files. So one thing you might want to do is create or change the metadata in your file. So what I will do is go up here to tools and then we have create a metadata template, edit one, append or replace. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a metadata template and I will call this test. We're going to select the core and I'm just going to put me, you should type in your name and I'm just going to copy this so we can do this. And then I'm going to hit me and then I live in PA. So we'll put PA and then my website will just put me again. And you're going to go through and you're going to fill out all this information. Now, some information is more important than others. So we'll come down here. So a headline will pick up description. What are, what are these images of? These are of Freddie, my dog. Keywords. Freddie, comma, dog, whatever else you want to. Keywords is going to be important because it's going to help you find information. They created any of this stuff that you want to fill out. You can come in here and fill out. Then we're going to hit save. And now what we're going to do is go up here to tools and we are going to do replace metadata with test, which is the one I just created. And bam, just like that, all these images. Now you have to make sure that the images you want to apply this to are selected. Right now, only one is selected. So make sure that everything is selected when you do this. And now you can see there's this information over here that we can use. So if I wanted to search for something, I can come over here and click Freddy the dog, and it's going to show me all my images with Freddy the dog. Hopefully that's been helpful. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.